Hello and welcome to this month's astrology video. This month we'll be looking at the sun passing through the lovely sign of Taurus. Uh, as you probably know by now, if you've watched some of my other videos, the earth signs I feel are very badly represented in modern astrology. So to bring back some reality, we are on the planet earth and we do need to consider earth in our astrology and our two way relationship with our own planet as well as the other planets in our solar system. So when we think of Taurus, we have to go to what the sun is doing at that time of the year and uh, we're in May. So Taurus isn't just stubborn and boring and slow moving. It's actually the beautiful energy of the fresh green buds, the wet earth, the potency of all the flowers, the roses blooming and the general feeling that spring is here, the smell of cut grass and that hopefulness as the sun begins to get warmer and we can go outside and appreciate nature. So Taurus put in that aspect becomes a bit more heartfelt, a bit more tangible and the earth signs are all to do with our senses on one level. So Taurus tells, tells us to slow down by all means but it's to stop and smell the roses, it's to slow down from the mentalism and the obligations and everything else that's going on that distracts us in life and to actually feel the earth under our feet and watch the roses bloom, listen to the bird song and appreciate that we are right here and right now. So there's a great deal of presence and stability with Taurus. And this is represented with the bull, which is the symbol of power and fertility. But also I feel we need to add the cow as well. So we have the bull and the cow, the masculine and the feminine. And the cow was known in Druid times for its nourishment. It gave milk and meat and hide. And the um, bull was very, very important, especially in the age of Taurus, because this is when we were um, reconnecting to ploughing the land and therefore able to make more of our land and have a bigger harvest and more abundance. So we have that earthy abundance that comes in, not just with the flowers blooming and the buds coming out, but also with our ability to work with the land. So Taurus is a very heartfelt and real sign and it's time to slow down and appreciate what we have now. There's a gratitude aspect and there's a release really from the cold winter and from the running around of Aries and there's a release to just sit and relax and feel life as it is in the present moment. Taurus is ruled by Venus which also rules Libra. And Venus, through the Earth sign of Taurus, is all about music and harmony. And the reason for this is that Venus is about two-thirds the size of Earth. And as they both make their orbits around the Sun, they create a beautiful, perfect, geometrical, harmonic pattern together. It's so beautiful and it's so symphonic that Venus-born Taurian, Libran individuals are normally very in contact with that geometry and that harmony and therefore um, steer towards in their lives steer towards the music and the arts so Taurus being earth you get rhythm you get the gardening aspect because that's creativity with earth and also with cooking as well there's a real connection with food and being creative with the uh, abundance of the land so Taurians are known for music food abundance and being very heartfelt and very now so that's what we have with the sign of Taurus. During the month of Taurus there's always a new moon in Taurus so the new moon is when the Sun and the moon are together and whenever we get these two luminary bodies together that doubles the energy and it's a good time to set intentions because we're on a single track we're very focused and one-minded so when the moon meets the sun we have a two-week window of growth and the new moon in Taurus says set intentions that are productive that are in alignment with what you feel in your heart that will actually echo your values and create things of lasting value into the future. So the new moon in Taurus is a wonderful time just to slow down and to make a plan going forwards but make sure that it's heartfelt and make sure that you'll be producing something that is valuable in the long run 
possibly making plans that take a little while to manifest because Taurus is a nice slow moving energy and it likes to do one thing at a time. This is the time when the flowers bloom and they certainly don't rush from seed to blossom. They take their time, everything in its place, that beautiful slower energy of the earth sign of Taurus. And the crystals I like for Taurus are malachite. Malachite is a beautiful dark green, copper, earthy crystal and it helps us to find our earth, to find our center and to find reason after any Aries activity to come into the Taurian energies with malachite and the herb I like for Taurus is patchouli which again has that wet earth feel to it. So those are the crystals and the herbs that I feel that we can actually work with in order to slow ourselves down, to reconnect with nature and timing and to really connect with our values as well so that we're creating from a harmonic heartfelt space. During the month of Taurus when the moon is opposite, that's the full moon in Scorpio. So what we're looking at here is the axis of life and death because Taurus is life and Scorpio is death. At the time of Taurus we have May when all the life is returning to the planet and at the time of Scorpio we have the death aspect when we're going into the winter months. So we're actually between Taurus and Gemini we have what's called the Silver Gate on the Milky Way. So the Milky Way flows in between Taurus and Gemini and that's where souls were said to enter. So again this echoes that life aspect. And there's a sensuality to this time as well. But as the Milky Way flows through, it leaves between Scorpio and Sagittarius. And that, again, echoes the death aspect. And Scorpio is all about the sexuality, the uh, intimate connection with not only this life, but with other lives as well. So that's where the souls leave at that point of Halloween. We're dealing with ethical killing off of our old self in order to be reborn in the month of Sagittarius. So the crystals that I like for the Scorpio full moon are hematite. Hematite is very deep and very magnetic and Scorpio is a water sign which is very magnetic in itself and takes us into the depths. So we can do quite good work with hematite at this time which really centers us and takes us with strength into our shadow side uh, to pull out magnetically anything that we want to die to so that we can start that alchemical process. And the herb I like for Scorpio is myrrh. This is one of the three wise men herbs and myrrh was used as an embalming fluid. It was a perfume of beginning that journey again at the point of death to actually take us through to the other world and Scorpio is ruled by Pluto which is the lord of the underworld as we go into that winter. So even though we're talking about the lovely lively sensual month of Taurus when the full moon comes along we're pulled into the opposite again just to make sure that we're still doing that work that we're still going inwards and we're still performing the constant alchemical process so that we can enjoy that rebirth and we can enjoy that life and nourishment and sensuality even more. So those are the aspects for Taurus and I'll see you next month.